Welcome back to Pro Tips for Independent Bands, the show where we are unfortunately brutal about the business of making music. Today we're talking about promoting your album or EP, specifically how much money you should spend on marketing to make it worthwhile. And when I say worthwhile, I do mean worthwhile in a business sense. I don't really care if it's rewarding in a musical sense. That is entirely your own problem, yeah? There are so many companies out there on the internet looking to exploit gullible musicians who just want to make music and have people listen to their music, which is fair enough. It's fair enough that they're wanting to do that, not that there are people willing to exploit them. That's bad. It's bad. And it's infuriating to see people throw money at services that they either just don't need or are, that are just a con. So it's important to bear in mind that while in this episode we are going to encourage you to hire outside people to do jobs for your band, you kind of need to hire people that you get a personal recommendation of. So they've worked with bands that you know well and you know they've done a good job because you've seen it. And most importantly, if you are going to pay for services online, please do a pedantic amount of research because I guarantee easily 80% of the things I see advertised for musicians are either things that you don't need, you probably will never need, or are things that you can do yourself for free. So please, please, please research. Anyway, I could rant about that for ages and I probably have and probably will. We were lucky enough to chat with John Wheeler, who is frontman of rock and roll parody band Hayseed Dixie. What Hayseed Dixie do is play bluegrass and folk renditions of classic rock and roll tunes. Him and Cy had a really long chat, and we're probably going to post a link to the full chat around here somewhere. This is just a highlight from stuff that is relevant to this episode, so I'm going to let those guys talk for a little bit and then recap in a few minutes. Take it away, John. Hey, here's an example. I mean, uh, there's a girl around town here in Cambridge who sent me a, a Facebook message a while back and she said, yeah, I've just got this new record. I just recorded it. You know, we did it in this nice studio. I think we spent I don't know, eight or nine grand or something. She said she spent making this record and hiring, hiring people. And she's like, I got about a thousand pounds left in a budget. You know, how should I promote it? And I was thinking to myself, oh man, I wish you'd talk to me before you recorded it because you kind of got that backwards. Mm. You probably should have spent a grand recording it and eight or nine grand marketing it. I mean, I would say, from my experience, that when you're, when you're doing an album or you're doing a film or you're writing a book or you're making cheesecake or brewing a beer or whatever, you're, you're taking a product to market and mm. people have to know it exists. I mean, build it and they will come, to me, is the stupidest phrase ever uttered. Mm -hmm. Build it and it'll sit there on your shelf. You know, nobody's gonna know, nobody's gonna buy it if they don't know it exists, mm. you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say 85, 90 percent of, of what you, what I do in the music business is is marketing it. Maybe 10 percent of it's actually creating the product, and that's not what I would have thought when I was a high school kid sitting in my bedroom trying to learn how to play, mm. you know, and listening to records because music is a very aspirational thing, and we all want to think of uh, of it as being like this burst of passion, and then somebody else somebody else takes it from there. Well, if somebody else takes it from there to market it, they're going to take most of your money. Mm. You know, and not that it's all about money. I mean, if I was trying to get rich, if I'd have spent even half the energy on being a property developer or something that I've spent trying to market music products, I'd probably be a much financially richer guy, mm. but I would have had a lot less experience. I don't have mm. any, any regrets about any of it. But I, I would say that what you should do is, is try to make your record as cheaply as you can do it and still maintain a reasonable quality level. I mean, you don't have to go to some super fancy studio anymore to make a decent sounding record, unless you're wanting to cut string sections or something, and maybe you ought to save that till you've got a decent budget. At the end of the day, like I was saying about cutting a rock grass record and, and you put the song front and center, Really, if, if you've got a great song and you've got it with, with a pretty decent performance, you could record it in a phone booth and it would still move people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, every breath you take could have been recorded in a bedroom on an acoustic guitar and it would still be a, a hit song. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's 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 a hit song. It just mm -hmm. is. That little guitar riff and his vocal over the top of it, is, it, it works, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I've never heard their demo of it. I'm sure there is one somewhere, and I'm sure it's great. You know, that's a very simple recording, actually. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of hit records are very simple recording. If you're having to hide behind a big production, then maybe your song isn't there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it was all about technical perfection, you know, Stones wouldn't have a career. Mm -hmm. Some of those records are really sloppy, but they got a vibe, you know? So I think you should try to make the record 
as I say, as cheaply as you can make it and still have it sound reasonable, and then take most of your money and spend it on trying to market it. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that, depending on what genre you're in. But I would say, if you're going to release a record, you should always try to hire at least a proper publicist to put it out there, and you should, you know, try to get reviews. And you need to, you need to do this at the same time that you're putting a tour together. I mean, mm -hmm. the analogy I would use to use a sports analogy is like if you watch a football match, you can see a team that plays really well but scores badly, mm -hmm. or you can have a team that plays kind of average but just scores really well because they're positioned real well mm -hmm. whenever there's an opportunity to put it through the net to mm -hmm. actually score. Mm -hmm. So to do that when you're marketing a product, the, the, the product has to be commercially available at the same time that you're doing promotion for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When people say things like, yeah, I've got a new record, I put it up on Bandcamp or whatever, so I've released a record. No, you haven't released a record. You've made it available. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between making it available and releasing it. Mm -hmm. Releasing it implies making it available and putting a promotional mm -hmm. drive behind it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think the minimum that you need when you try to release an album is a, a publicist who's going to work the the print media and the and the digital side of things and there's lots of them you know you can go shop around i mean a, a good one just for the uk you might get one for 1500 in pounds you, mm -hmm. you can always negotiate you know mm -hmm. if they quote a price of three grand at you go back and say can you do it for 15 i mean you know mm -hmm. it's like trying to buy a car or something don't yeah. or a piece of antique or don't, don't go <laughs> pay them what they offer <laughs> but um you need at least a publicist and and somebody who's booking you a tour that puts you in front of some people at the same time this is happening mm -hmm. and you, you probably wouldn't be doing bad to try to get a radio plug or to sling it around a little bit as well there's a, a lot of options i mean people talk about digital distribution I, but i'm still not convinced that that the majority of the population out there goes on YouTube looking for new music. I think they go on things like YouTube looking for something that they already know. Mm. And traditional radio still matters. It mm. really does. I mean, I notice it. I mean, uh, you know, if if Chris Evans plays one of our tracks on his breakfast show on Radio 2, it is not subtle. Everything mm. lights up, man. The Amazon rankings and the iTunes and the website and the Facebook, everything lights up. Mm for a couple of days, you know. And there will only probably be a handful of people in, in, in any given country who are into the music you're into unless you're trying to make a straight pop record, mm -hmm. in which case you definitely need to hire a radio plugger. Yeah, try to keep, to release an album in the UK, I think you need five, six grand in your budget mm -hmm. just to hire subcontractors to promote it. And that's all a record label really does anymore is hire subcontractors and they'll front the money for it, mm -hmm. but then they'll take a huge piece back on the backside. So. You really need to be able to, if you're a band or a solo artist or whatever, you need to be able to come up with probably eight or ten thousand pounds mm. to make your record, get the packaging done, and hire people to then go promote it. Somewhere around there, you know, and that's a reasonable amount of money, but it's not insurmountable. If you got a group of four or five guys, you ought to be able to each pony up a couple of grand for the promotion of it. And then don't sign to a record label. I mean, you can go to any number of distributors. There's only a handful of bricks and mortars retail. There's H&B and there's Amazon that's going to mm. sell vinyl and, mm. and C physical CDs. Mm. You don't need a record label. The only time you need a record label anymore, like you, there's only about three, there's Universal and Sony and Warner Bros. That's it. Mm. The only time you need one of those guys is if you think you're the next Adele, you know, mm. and you're doing really right down the middle pop music. Mm then maybe yeah okay you need the kind of marketing power they're going to put up so that eventually you can get a pepsi sponsorship and make all your money selling perfume mm. <laughs> because you're going to give them the record in exchange for them spending a lot of money and that's that's maybe an okay trade mm. if you think that you're going to sell arenas but if you think you're anything else and most people are anything else mm. then like any business keep your overhead low but but you've got to spend marketing money to let people know that it exists so i i to just to distill it down i'd say try to write the best songs possible mm. um try to perform them with some spontaneity and some guts but but if you got to air on one side or the other air on the side of a stripped down guitar bass drums recording mm -hmm. that's quite simple but that puts the energy across make that as cheaply as possible and then spend your money promoting it oh and, and hire somebody who knows what they're doing to take the pictures <laughs> Fair There's enough. nothing to make you look, you know, unprofessional like shit promo pictures. Do you, do you speak from experience in that yes. regard? <laughs> yes. hire, hire somebody who knows what they're doing with lighting if you don't have somebody in your unit that does to take proper good photos of you. Fair enough. And then all, I would also say when you write your bio, you write your press release for your record, one page, you know, two, three paragraphs, when you write that, you were writing 90% of your record reviews. 
most of the people that, that, that in say any of the magazines or the websites or whatever, they will quote your press release damn near word for word and then chuck their name down at the end. I've watched it happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so you're writing your own reviews. Yeah. And nobody cares about your deep poetic soul. Nobody wants to know if he grew up in a small village outside of Peterborough and he spent mm -hmm. many hours working in the fields and also practicing his story. Nobody gives a crap. <laughs> Man, make an, you're doing a show. Make it entertaining. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after he created the internet, he then decided to go out and he discovered he was working on, you know, Cold Fusion in Denmark when he met this girl. And, you know, you, you know make up yeah. a story, man. Yeah. Make it fun. Mm -hmm. This is the entertainment business. Entertain mm -hmm. people. They got lots of stuff they could spend their money on a given day. You know, some guy mm -hmm. lays brick all day long. He's got his own problem. Problems. He goes mm. home to some spouse he doesn't love anymore, and he, you know what I mean. He's doing a job that sucks, and so he comes out to your show, or he sees your your bio come across his feed in some record of you. He wants to say to himself, "I want to drink with that guy." <laughs> he doesn't want to say, "Oh, maybe he's going to tell me about the meaning of life." No, man. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> so John had plenty to say on a variety of issues, not just what you saw there. So we're we'll making it available here, probably. For you to have a look at and probably referencing it in some future episodes as well. So let's recap point by point. First off, 85 to 90 percent of your budget should go on promoting your recording. This idea of build it and they will come is just stupid. Sorry it is. People aren't going to give a damn about whatever it is you do unless they know it's there. So do the recording as cheaply as possible without compromising what you want to achieve musically. Um, and do always bear in mind that a good song will always be a good song even if the recording isn't superb quality. Okay? Maybe you don't need an entire orchestra, maybe you can achieve it with a keyboard player. Hire a publicist to work the print media and get you guys reviews. You can do this by yourself, but you're always better off getting someone else who has their experience and their contacts for you to work with, probably in addition to your own experiences and your own contacts. And this does allow you to focus on the music making portion of being a musician and not having to worry about the marketing portion of being a musician. Focus on what you're good at, not what you have to do. Touring. We said this a little bit last episode when we were talking about DJs. Basically, you need to show the world what it is you're doing. And that's the best way to promote something, is by taking it around the country, or around the world, or wherever, and just showing people what it is you can do. There will be times that people don't go to your gigs, that's just part of being a musician. At the very least, hopefully there'll be some posters around that city with your logo on it, so that's something, I guess. Record labels. All the major record labels really do at the moment is subcontract people to do particular tour or promotional jobs. So why don't you just do that? Cut out the middleman and then you don't have a label taking shed loads of your money, right? A record label is probably going to have better contacts than you and better links, but the money they would want is probably not going to make that worthwhile. That's the big labels anyway, and there's only like two or three of them now anyway. We can't really talk about independent labels because there's so many of them and they vary so vastly on what it is they actually do, so we can't really comment on any independent labels. Photographers. Get someone that's actually a photographer and isn't just some dude with a camera and a Tumblr account, okay? For the love of crikey, get a real photographer. One that owns a camera and has business cards and a website photographer. Put effort into your band bio and your press releases because most publications are just gonna copy, paste, done. That's your review. And please, please, please make it funny as well for people like me that suck at reading. Make it entertaining. Tell a story. Maybe writing a press release will get its own episode. Who knows? So there we have it. Thanks so much to John Wheeler of Hasty Dixie for coming in and lending his experience so uh, hilariously and so informatively as he did. You can find the interview in full right here and I very much suggest that you do that and you do that right now or in a second when I'm done talking. What is talked about in that interview? Cy and John talk about things like the logistics of touring, we go into some depth with that, uh, decision making, leadership and roles within a band, 
Um, we talk a little bit about how to fire people as well, that was fun, and have a lot of laughs along the way. So, hugely suggest that you check that out. That's enough from me, I will see you next time. I hope this has been useful to you, and bye. Thanks again for checking out Pro Tips for Independent Bands. I'm really happy we were able to bring you this series, and I'm super happy that we're able to bring in people with different experiences to us and in specific areas of the industry as well. I think that's really cool that we're able to do that now. Uh, please feel free to connect with us over Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We're really easy to find. We are Stabbed Panda or at Stabbed Panda. Uh, you can also check out stabpanda.com where all of our content from all of our various projects gets posted. On the social media stuff, we tend to share behind the scenes things and articles we think are interesting as well as all the creations that we make ourselves. Lastly, if you want to be an absolute champion and go and support us on Patreon, that would be amazing. Patreon is basically like Kickstarter, but it's on a monthly basis. So rather than just giving us a pile of money, you would give us a couple pounds, well it's on dollars, a couple dollars every month to help support what we're doing. And that goes into things like travel costs for guests, better microphones, better lighting. Lighting is the big thing in here that we can't really afford out of our own pockets. So yeah, if you want to check out patreon.com forward slash stab panda, that would be amazing. This show I hope is always going to be free, but it's stuff like this that makes them a little bit cooler. So if you want to do that, I just did air guns. I need to go. I'll see you later.